Hey guys, Gordon here from G-Create. Now, ever since we got into 3D printing, there's one thing we've always wanted to try. What if you can take your already amazing 3D print and cast it out of solid aluminum? Well, we finally had a chance to actually do it, and we're very excited because it was a lot of fun. So please sit back and watch these videos where we design a part in 3D, we slice it, we print it, and we cast it out of solid aluminum on our backyard boundary. So stay tuned. All right, so now that we knew we wanted to do aluminum casting, uh, we had to have something to cast. So we came up with two basic ideas. Uh, one would be a, a plate uh, that would uh, be used for the sand casting, and the second would be some sort of model used with the plaster casting. So to start with the sand casting, we came up with this really cool plate that uh, we were gonna, was going to showcase our company name, our logo, and then our kind of iconic rocket. So I kept the grid on here. You can kind of see... It's about, let me see if we can see it here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 inches long by I think about four or five inches tall. And it's a very flat plate, so you can kind of see here just how flat it is. We actually fixed the rocket so that there were no um, overhangs. So obviously when you're putting it into green sand or the sand itself, you want to make sure that uh, you can pull it back out. So well, with these plates, our thought process was that um, you can kind of see how much detail is in here. This background here is actually kind of ribbed, just to give it some texture. And then this background here would be flat. Um, and then the actual text itself would be flat. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what the end result would look like. So the thought was, when you're done, the hope is it would look like this. So basically, I think this is too high here, but... Basically, you uh, you take these two sides when you're done casting, and you spray paint this side red, and then you can spray paint this side whatever color you want. And there's actually, it's kind of hard to see here, I think it moved. But you can kind of see on this one, there's actually a lip around the edge of the actual rocket, so you can tape off the rocket. The thought being that the rocket and smoke would be just kind of natural, speckly aluminum from the sand. These two, as I mentioned, would be spray painted, and when you're done, you actually sand off or, or kind of grind down the surface so that the lettering itself would show through as the kind of polished aluminum. So uh, to make uh, this plate, I basically um, simply took, I'll actually take away the boolean so you can see everything inside of it. So the components to make up this actual object, as you can kind of see here, let me see if I can color code them. <laughs> There's a, a lot of different booleans going on, which is actually how we made the actual plate. But basically, this outer one is, um, what's this for? This was to erase a portion of the kind of ribbed texture here. So this, you see, if I take it away, that, that just cuts off the edge of this, uh, it's hard to see, the edge of the ribbing. I'm just going to color code it here so you can actually see things better. Okay. And then all these elements are basically just extrudes. So this is an extrusion here, just the outer spline. There's an extrusion for the um, the actual text for G-Create. What will you create? All those. So those are just simple extrusions here. And yeah, so in the end, after combining and booleaning, booleaning and uh, subtracting and unioning everything, we came up with a plate. So uh, in addition to the plate for, for ourselves, we actually made another plate for a family member, which is here. <laughs> so this one here has the same kind of uh, ribbed background. Again, we would use this for the, the sand casting. So you're going to put this in sand or pack sand all around it and pull it back out and pour the aluminum in. Uh, so we gave him um, uh, his name. This is for his garage itself. And then the, again, it has two different layers. So you can have the blue background would be spray painted and then you can sand off the actual tools and the text to have that shine through. And uh, you can kind of see they're pretty low plates, they're maybe half inch tall total. I mean, something like that, maybe three quarter inch. But yeah. So these are the two plates we wanted to use for the actual sand casting as well as a, a few other small trinkets like uh, keychains and things like that. Now, in addition to the uh, sand casting, as I mentioned, we wanted to, we wanted to try plaster casting. So we chose our, our kind of signature logo here, the rocket ship. And this one we figured we would actually embed it in, in, um, in plaster 
melt out the actual material and then pour the aluminum in. So uh, we actually chose to print this in carbon fiber uh, PLA, uh, which we weren't sure how it would work out, if it would fail or if it would be you know, not the best material. Ideally, you want to use wax, and uh, we're actually playing around with wax filament as well, but uh, we didn't have it you know, done in time, or we haven't really played with it enough to, to try it out. So we just went ahead and took one of our standard rockets. Uh, if, if you've never seen the rocket, it's available on Thingiverse. And um, here's what it actually looks like in the 3D program. You can see all the detail here. I think I'm showing every triangle. But yeah, so this one uh, this one was a lot of fun um, to print because or to, to pour because of the detail itself. Okay, so now that we had the <laughs> the models done, we can go ahead and slice them and print them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in uh, the Tom's Garage um, plate here. Uh, sometimes when you bring these models in, because of the way 3ds Max exports uh, STLs, they come in in the wrong units, so you have to scale it up. So you can either scale it up by, let's see if I get on it, going the model, going to the model and changing the scale here to 2,540 percent, and uh, or uh, I think uh, Simplify has it built in where you can go to uh, scale inches to millimeters. A lot of times when you pull something really small in, it'll ask you, but I think this is just big enough it didn't ask. So there you go. That'll just scale it up. And now you see if I go here, it's at 2,540% anyway. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the settings we used here. So, oh, for whatever reason, this is on the wrong. Um, Okay, so for left extruder, we use the uh, the 0.5 ext uh, nozzle diameter. That's the one we were using for this. We set the uh, let's take a look here. The layer height we did 160, so it's 0 0.160 or 0 0.16. Uh, we wanted to go a little bit finer because of the the ridges in the back of the actual plate. I want to make sure that they didn't they didn't look too uh, you see too many lines. But then again, we're casting it in sand, so you're not really going to see them anyway. Uh, to to improve uh, the first layer so it, it adheres a little bit better, you can kick this up pretty high to maybe like 350. So you have 350% of 160. So you, you at least get a nice thick, you know, first layer height. Uh, and then the actual layers themselves, because again, this is so such a small number, a lot of times you want to increase the top solid layers and uh, bottom solid layers to really um, beef up the top and bottom solid layers, basically. Um... What else did we do? So yeah, two perimeters we were happy with. Uh, the skirt and brim. Because uh, this is such a big flat plate, it might tend to, uh, in, in, at least in previous examples, it'll tend to kind of peel up and curl up a tiny bit at the corners. So one way of stopping that is to put something like 12 or 13 skirt layers, or skirt outlines, and just set the offset to be zero. So basically, on the outside of the part, you'll have 13 outlines that'll really stick those corners down, so it won't peel up. Uh, this is this is great if you're trying to do a big, large, flat object. Uh, the other option is you could actually, uh, instead of doing a skirt or brim, you can use a raft, which will basically print your entire model on top of a raft of plastic. Um, that tends to leave the bottom layer looking kind of um, messy, so we prefer having it flat on the acrylic bed. Uh, which and using the skirt outlines with a zero offset anyway. So for infill, we just uh, we did. I actually like the um, triangular a lot. And then turn off print infill at every or uh, print every infill angle in each layer just to speed up your print. But I think this is a great uh, a great infill because uh, when you do the top solid layers, it has a lot more kind of scaffolding to build upon, and especially if your you know orientation is not set, properly set kind of on the bed. Uh, we did a 35% infill. There's no need to really go more or less than this. Uh, it's not really supposed to be a strong part. It just has to kind of hold together for the, for the sand. Um, the rest you can pretty much leave where they are. Uh, obviously, there's no support for this model. It's a very flat, small thing. Temperature is another one that if you find that you're printing a large flat plate like this and it's peeling a little bit, uh, you can increase your first layer temperature a little bit. Really, if you only go up to two, 205, uh, then it'll stick a lot better than 201, but the problem is it might stick too much. So getting it off, you might ruin your print or your, your bed. So uh, that's why we have this set so low, but if you do find it's curling a little bit, you can increase it you know, a few degrees, really. Um, and it should be worth mentioning, we're using PLA for this print, not to, not ABS, um, just for its ease of use and, 
and you don't really need to have the strength anyway. Uh, for cooling, we tend to set cooling a little bit higher now, so the third layer we have a 60% fan speed, and by layer 8 it's at 80, so it's a pretty high cooling. And the rest should be about the same. Oh, uh, the, the printing speed itself, um, I think we set this a little bit lower because we wanted to have the edges of the actual um, the perimeters be really nice, you know, nicely uh, printed. So you can keep the 70 or even higher for the general print speed, but set the default underscore or under speed to like maybe 50. So that means it'll print the outside of the outlines of the model at 35 millimeters a second. And yeah, and the rest there's nothing else in there. So yeah, in the end, you can see what it looks like. So there's the uh, final result. The uh, top layers are nice and solid. It's a nice fine layer height. It says it's about five hours. I think in the end it actually printed a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and take this over to the printer and print it out. Okay, so now we already have a few parts that have been designed and sliced and they're ready to be printed. So if you want to see part two, go ahead and click here. And as always, if you want to see really cool things we're working on all the time, check out our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages, all at GCreate3D.